Alright lovely people and a warm hello from Bunny Scotland, Jill's here, your designer in your pocket. Today I'm going to be busting a huge myth and that myth is that Canva can't handle professional looking videos, especially commercials. Now I know what you might be thinking, Canva for my kids birthday party invites maybe or for some social media graphics but I use Canva every single day as a professional designer. I think I love more than spilling those myths that you cannot use it professionally. Now, as you know, animations are my jam. And what better way to show you than to use a real brand? Now, this is for one of Scotland's most well-known brands, Tanux Tea Cakes. They make the finest biscuits ever. They have a very distinctive brand look and feel, which I am going to recreate inside Canva proving that professional polish doesn't have to come with a hefty price tag or complicated software. So grab a cuppa, get comfy and let's dive into the world of animations. I went on to the Tanux website just to get a real feel for their brand style and some of the brand assets they have because one of the ways to make this as professional as possible is to try and replicate their brand look and feel as closely as you possibly can. Now, I don't have the brand guidelines for Tanux, so and you can see that they do have a very vibrant, bright colour palette, mostly red and yellow. Going into the product pages, you can see you have a lot of these striking sunbursts behind their products. I, I like to gather as many assets as I think I'll need. When I start any project, I don't actually start off opening up a blank template. I always start off on a whiteboard. Whiteboards are my real secret weapon inside Canva when I am working on any of my animations or any of my designs that I do. So what I've done is I have taken a couple of screenshots of their website pages just so it can get a good idea of what I need to replicate. We've got obviously the, the logo um, of their most famous biscuits, um, the caramel logs and the caramel wafers and of course the Tunnux snowballs and tea cakes because I want to put these within the actual advert, picked out the colour palette and just for reference gathered some other images that I like. This page here that I seen it actually had the kind of Glasgow skyline in the background um, so I thought right I want to use that. And you also see that the Tunnux tea cakes here look like a little hot air balloons so what I did is I just replicated the hot air balloons here using some simple lines and element shapes and we also had some skyline graphics of Glasgow that I could now include into the advert. So from here I find it's a much easier space to create than being restricted by the small frame size and feeling like it has to be a finished product in a template. When I'm on a whiteboard I can just experiment. If I scroll down on the whiteboard, I've now laid out a rough wireframe of how I want the animation to evolve and look and some of the key frames and changes that are in there. Again, I just find it easier to work it all out on the whiteboard before taking it into the actual finished graphic animation. Actual animation for the actual animation. If I just got to hit play, I will play it for you just now. You can see I have lots of different transition effects and now if I quickly show you the grid view, you can see that there are quite a few different pages to this to get all of those transitions and animations to work and I'll break down a few of them for you just now. To begin creating this animation, I want to make this a Facebook advert. So we're going to go to video and then we can click Facebook video from the top here and it's going to give us the square format page size that we need. First of all, I'll just grab the logo and I've just downloaded these direct from the website. I'm going to place the logo exactly in the middle. You'll see that it's actually picked up a few of the red shades that are in the logo. So I'll just click that for the background. And I want to have that lovely starburst effect that was in the website. Now, as you can see, this starburst is used throughout a lot of their website and advertising. So I want to include that in the first page of the animation. So I'm just going to go to elements and say, type in starburst and go to graphics. I'm going to select this one here because this is the closest 
Now it is the wrong colour but I can just change that up here and I'm going to make it a slightly darker shade of red just so it stands out against the background. I'll also change the position of it so it sits behind the logo. There's a transition where there is some of the biscuits jumping out from behind the logo. Then we have the text made in Scotland since 1890 appear. And then lastly, the biscuits all start to move around in a circle. So there's quite a lot already happening in those first few transitions, which I'll talk you through just now. Now, as you can see, from the very first transition, we actually have the Tunnock's confectionery jumping out from behind the logo and the logo shrinks down in size. We then go on to a gradient yellow background instead of the red and the starburst from the second frame then starts to appear and then we have the slogan made in Scotland since 1890 then appear. With Facebook animated adverts, everything happens very quickly. The changes are very punchy, impactful. So we'll find when we play, play the first few slides we want things to all happen very quickly and the things spinning around. And the way that we get that to happen is if we click on the first page, but if I go to position and I go to layers, you can actually see that I have all of the confectionery hidden behind the logo here. So if I move this logo out of the way, you can see that the confectionery all sits behind and also there is a different starburst. If I just enlarge that there, you can see there's also another starburst. But you don't see it yet because it is hidden behind the bigger logo. I have to have it on that frame so that when I use the match and move transition that I can get the movement to pop out like so. So you can see I've got the match and move there. When I then move on to the next slide, all I am changing in this slide is I am increasing the size of the starburst in the background. So on the previous page, the starburst is just sitting here, just behind the logo. And then we're going to the second page, it is now enlarged up in size. Then I've copied the frame again. This time I've added the Made in Scotland since 1890. And I've added a little animation. Now, also to get this curve effect, it's two separate text boxes. First of all, to create this curve effect, you have to select your text and go to effects and select curve. And if I just take this down to negative, I'll make it negative 15. And then with the other part of the text, again, do the curve effect, but this time make it curve the other way, plus 15. And then you can simply move it into place so that it's going in this nice curve and we would group them together so that they animate all at the same time. Now if you want to animate any of the elements inside your Canva design, if you click on an element and you go up to animate, then there's all sorts of different animation effects. We have fade, we have blur, we have succession, which is quite a new one as well, and breathe. And you can even have things tumbling onto the page and stomp, which stomp is one of my favourites. And if you click to page instead, then we can actually animate the page all at the same time to create a different set of effects too. So you can either animate by page or by individual elements. When we are working inside Canva, you'll see that I have lots of different individual pages here because sometimes it takes quite a few pages to work up to what looks like quite a simple effect. So if I click on the second page and zoom out so you can see everything and I start to play it, we have the starburst and this text coming in and then the elements all moving around in a circle before quickly moving in to different backgrounds. So I just want to talk you through this one here and how I created this effect. For the biscuits, so the caramel logs and the tea cakes, I have added a white outline around each element. And this is to match in with the style that is used on their website. So if we click the two wee arrows, click on effects and shadows, I have added the outline and I can change it and make it thicker or thinner 
I can also blur and have no blur at all. I can also change the angle. To create the effect where we have the biscuits all circle around one another, we break this down into pages. So I'm going to go to my whiteboard and I'm going to grab all the elements from that design, change the colour of the background. Now the pages are too long in length so I'm just going to reduce this to about one second and I'll duplicate the page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move each element around a circle one at a time and then I'll move that one so oh, just move them around just one position at a time and once I'm happy with the position if I go between the two pages and add a transition and I'm going to add match and move you can now see that that has moved them all around at one position and then we just need to repeat that action again. I'm just going to move that down a wee bit so it keeps the kind of circle shape. Then I would just duplicate the page again and then move everything around once again like so. Add the transition. So you can quickly see I've just done the first couple of pages but it starts to move everything around in the circle. Now in the original design I have done this several times and then lastly we want everything to move off of the page for the last transition and I've also increased the size of the starburst. So if we duplicate the page this time we're going to increase the starburst and then we can just move everything off of the page so we're just keeping its ever so slightly in the frame so that we don't lose it completely. Again add the match move transition and you can now see that we have the biscuits all disappearing off the edge of the page and the starburst has increased in size as well. Now what's important and what works really well with these animations is if you have lots of colour changes in the background, things moving in and out, using the animation techniques available inside the Canva program as well as the page transitions. As you can see with this one all I have done is use the match and move and I have changed the colour of the background. I've removed the starburst and just added a really lovely radial gradient in the background. For the next page it's a transition again but this time I am just swiping the logo off of the screen. In the next transition I've then got the logo coming back onto the screen and this time I have added the, the hot air balloon graphics again because these are in the Tunnox website so again we want to link to as many possible assets from the original <coughs> brand and to get the appearance of the hot air balloons coming onto the page if I click on a previous page and I go up to the top it's actually sitting at the top and it only has 2% transparency so you can't see them on this page but yet when you hover across you can then see it coming down and gradually fades up to the full transparency. And this is how you also add these other elements to. I've actually got the Glasgow skyline just sitting slightly off the page. Again there's zero transparency and then it slowly moves up into view and this time I've also got the starburst effect in the background and if I just go to my layers again this hidden layer here is the starburst. There is 0% transparency and that is so I can increase the size of it in the next slide. So you can see often to get these things to build up and to create the animation effects that we have a lot of things hidden on the previous pages before they appear in the next one. I'm then changing the colour of the background again and this time I'm introducing some text and again I've taken text from the website and that's there's tons of taste in Tunnox. This is one of their famous phrases and again bringing the product back into being prominent place within the advert so you don't forget and then this time instead of using the match and move I am using what's called a colour wipe transition 
and you can edit the colours again to make sure they're perfectly on brand. We can actually change directions, we can have it going diagonal and I'm just going to change it back to original direction. So as I hover across you can see that we have this lovely fast colour wipe. So bringing back in our prominent starburst. Biscuits again looking like they're falling onto the page and this time I've added a few enlarging in size and we do that by adding separate animations to some of the elements which is the pulse effect and then some of them I want to appear like they're in the background so I went to edit and I went to adjust and I've just reduced the brightness right down so that they're a bit muted in the background. So this again is another way to add a bit of depth and just a bit more interest to your transitions and your animations so they don't all act the same way on the page at the same time. So now when I bring these in you can see that the ones that aren't faded out are also pulsing and changing in size and then they are going off the bottom of the page and the logo comes back in. The last transition I've got is again all of the biscuits bursting out from behind the logo and even just adding this drop shadow behind the logo really helps add more depth and make it look much more 3D and realistic and it's these little touches that really add to the finish of your animation. Again we just want to introduce one of their famous taglines, always time for a ton up. And here is a finished animation. If you would love to see a full breakdown step by step of how I created this animation, I have it as a full tutorial inside my Animation Academy. I also include the Canva templates and the whiteboard too. And do me let me know if you enjoyed that tutorial and make sure you subscribe because I have lots more animation tutorials coming your way. And if you have ever tried Tunnock's Tea Cake, although my personal favourite is the Caramel Locks. Now, if you did enjoy that animation, then make sure to watch my next video. Do a sneaky peek and see my animation academy. And that's my strawberry smoothie animation. As always, thanks so much for watching my channel and do make sure to subscribe now.